Hello ladies, gentlemen, and those that don't identify themselves in that binary. I'm the Ski, and welcome to my Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke. As we have last week, we're heading along Route 6, grinding and levelling up. And I came across this Doug Trio while Barkley was at the head of my party. Barkley used Intimidate, brilliant, take the Doug Trio's attack down. Unfortunately, Barkley is not the Pokemon to take on a Doug Trio. And even more unfortunately, Doug Trio had Arena Trap. The only thing I could do was run. Unfortunately, Arena Trap prevents run. Had a look through the items I had and realised that realistically there's nothing I could use other than healing up Barkley and hoping to win the fight. So I had a Super Potion. I used a Super Potion. Barkley almost at level 30, back up to full hit points. Doug Trio used Bulbos, which didn't destroy Barkley. I realised at this point that essentially there's nothing I could do to save Barkley. The only thing I could try was a Fire Fang, take out Doug Trio. Unfortunately, Doug Trio had Sucker Punch, and that was the end of our Barky boy. Barkley had done so well for us, led us through the grass gym at Turfield, and now had just been beaten by an arena trap dog trio. Nothing we could really do. Obviously I brought out Korax, you know, flying type, ready to just attack this ground type and take it down. Dog trio used Sandstorm, not an issue for us really. If we'd started with Sandstorm we might have done enough damage to take it out in a couple of turns, but that's the breaks. Unfortunately in Nuzlocke you will sometimes just lose a Pokemon to bad luck. Dugtree I use Slash, Korax uses Payback, and that took out the Dugtrio, that took out Barkley. So with that done, we had to go into the menu, into the Pokemon section, and release Barkley. Barkley would served as well, but that time was over, so we needed to replace him in the party. So I picked Smoke in, get a Ghost type in there, and a Ground type to move forward. So after the um, chilling loss of Barkley, went to Stow on side, and there's a last trainer on the way to get there. Artist Duncan. Artist Duncan had a coffin, and so Bellerophon, who was at the head of our party after the loss of Barkley, uh, was there to use it. Coughing has neutralising gas, which means any abilities that you normally use don't work. And that's pretty useful for us when, you know, there's something we don't want. Especially with Klutz, say, on Rupert. But considering that we're not fighting double battles, it's not as useful as it could be. The Coughing decided to blow itself up to attack us and uh, did a bit of damage, but not enough to really do, it, do anything wrong with Bellerophon. So, staying in with Bellerophon to begin with. Bellerophon actually healing up because leftovers are wonderful. Leftovers work quite well in multiplayer, but in single player it's free healing, so it stops you having to go back to the Pokemon Center. It's all good. But then, yes, Pseudo Wudo was brought out. Rock Tomb, first of all. Pseudo Wudo is a rock type Pokemon, so it's not going to do a lot of damage, but the speed drop was what I was looking for here. Now the Rock Throw did a ridiculously high amount of damage to Bellerophon, but with the healing back over half hit, it's not like it's going to do too much to us. So I thought about Bite, because Bellerophon's Bite is usually a pretty helpful move, and well, it didn't do a lot. Rock Slide came in and more than a quarter of our hits, it wasn't worth us, you know, keeping Bellerophon in. So it was time to switch. 
Rupert was paralysed, but even at the slow speed, high hit points, high damage, Rupert was the choice I was going for. So, Pseudo Widow rock slid at Rupert, not a problem. And Rupert turned back with a Bulldoze, which almost knocked out that Pseudo Rudo. The Slam came back. Rupert used Strength. That's Rupert's stab move. It's a powerful move anyway. That's enough to just knock that last bit of health points off and beat up Artist Duncan. Rupert becomes level 33. Artist Duncan is defeated, and uh, we're able to progress and get into the Pokemon Center at Stow on side to heal up. See, Stow on side as we enter it. Nice view of the town. See, there's a marketplace. We can't buy things, but you know, it's nice to know there's a marketplace. And Hop standing there, ready to challenge us when we go in. So first things first is to wander around, stow on side, and get ready to go and fight Hop. Obviously, get into the Pokemon Center and heal up. If we're going to be fighting Hop, we know he's got a varied team, so we're going to need everyone at peak fitness, especially the newbies drafted into the team after our losses on that route. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to lose so many Pokemon on that route, so really it's getting to know those new Pokemon, and I don't really want to do that in a fight with Hop, but that's the best chance we've got. So, as always, wander around, talk to people, they might give you free things. In this case, fossilized drakes. Unfortunately, we've already captured a Pokemon on Route 6, so we're not going to be able to get ourselves a nice um, new shiny fossil Pokemon, because that would count as our free one, but we already captured something. It's a shame, but what can you do, eh? Walk around, see all these nice people, this Maractus jumping around, running a stall, showing that Pokemon clearly have the capacity to understand currency, which is mind-boggling, really. Still, the nice thing about Stone Side is there is little back alleys and things to climb up. They've made a sort of real 3D world, they've made use of the 3D that they've got. Even if there's not a lot going on, it's quite nice that they've thought about it and added that, and hopefully the series will have a bit more of that going forward. There's a trade of a Maractus for an Impidimp, I don't have a Maractus, so there's no, you know, no way of doing that. And also there's no reason to, as Impidimp are found in the next route. And in fact, I'm probably going to grab one of those before the next gym battle, just so we've got a bit more of a choice with what we're moving forward. Still, climbing back down, actually being very bad at climbing down. Not aiming properly. I'm more used to using my Switch handheld. When I have to use it as a controller, I tend to not be very good at it, as I'm sure you've noticed if you've watched any of these other videos. Still, wandering along, going into the houses, sort of see what's happening in the town, and again, looking for free stuff. Unfortunately, not so much. There's quite a few items sitting around. X special attacks don't help us because we can't use them in trainer battles, but it's fine. And uh, there's Hop, who's going to challenge us to a battle. Now, there's a downside here for Hop, in that he's still feeling a bit bad that he lost and he's treading on his brother's legacy. So he's going to challenge someone who has to win every battle. Well, you do you, Hop, and we will take our Pokemon against you. So he opens with a Cramorant, and we've got Bellerophon. Now Cramorant, water type, Bellerophon, water type. Not much of a problem. And the fact that Bellerophon's got rock means that Cramorant shouldn't be too much of an issue for Bellerophon to get through. And it really isn't. I mean, Hop understands why we went for the super effective. He knows how to do these battles. He's, you know, been learning and getting better. It's just that his opening gambit and mine 
mine was just luckier and better. If I'd have put out, you know, a fire type first, that would have been a problem. We get some level ups, which is always nice. Got my Skaroopy there to level 30. It wants to learn Pin Missile. Pin Missile's not the worst move, not the best, but with Bug Bite doing 60 points of damage and Pin Missile doing 25 multiple times, it's a trade off. So we decided to go with Pin Missile because the multiple hits always useful. And next, Hop sends out a Silicobra. See, we saw a Silicobra earlier, we've not seen one since. But as we're here, it looks ground type. There's only one thing to do, and that is to water gun it. And then we remember that uh, water gun from Bellerophon, not the best move. Bellerophon is a um, is a as a physical attacking Pokemon in general, and water is a special water gun is a special attack. In fact, water is a very special surrounded um, move set, so the physical water types do have a bit of a problem. Thankfully, the second hit did a bit more damage. There was a protect there earlier because when the AI digs against you, protect always works. Yep, so. Hop goes for uh, healing up the Silicobra, getting it into that, you know, back up to near full. So we go for another water gun. We can keep doing this. Um, we might take it out in two turns. Might take it out in three. Not that much of a problem. Bellerophon water guns again, and Silicobra goes down. Overall, things are looking up. Things are going pretty well for us. Uh, Bellerophon hasn't had to switch out, because switching out, that's where the danger is in a Nuzlocke, so unless you're moving into something that you know is going to resist it, it's very rarely worth it. And then Reboot comes out, and Bellerophon is the perfect Pokémon to take on Reboot right now. Reboot is pure fire, and we are rock and water. Now, round... Interesting move in general, because if you have multiple Pokémon using round, they move after one another, which is always useful to sort of get a slow Pokémon moving quickly, but realistically it's not that great one-on-one. -on -one. Bellerophon actually heals up a bit more, and we should be able to use our Water Gun to take out the reboot for very little damage. So we're three Pokémon down, Hop is in a pretty tight spot, and we're sitting pretty with a full party. Even get a level up for Mulder, who we've not used in a while. Do we want Mulder to learn Mirror Coat? Okay, always have a look and see what it will do. And it's counter, but for special. Not really worth it for us. We've got a Psychic attacking move, a Bug attacking move, and the screens. And that's where Mulder is. Mold, that's what Mulder's build is for the rest of the game, really. I mean, Hop at least is aware there's not a lot he can do to win, so he puts out a Toxel. Level 29 Toxel. Not evolved into Toxtricity. It being an electric type, we use Rock Tomb. And that's the end of that. Doesn't push Korax up to um, the next level, but we're close enough. So we've done quite a bit of work, and we should be ready to do a little bit more, a bit of grinding, and getting ourselves ready to go to the gym relatively soon. So Hop's still learning how to do switching in and switching out. Didn't use any against us, which would have helped him, but. Well, maybe not so much. Bellerophon was apparently the counter to the entire team, which is a bit of a shame. Opal appears again and tells us that, you know, they're thinking about Hop and looking forward to us uh, coming to the gym. At this point, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. And as always, have a lovely day.